All right, listeners, buckle up for a deep dive that's um, a little bit different than our usual fare. Yeah, we're switching gears from, you know, the typical deep dives. Right, exactly. And venturing into the world of relationship advice. Oh, spicy. But for men specifically. For men. Yes. Okay, so we're going to be unpacking some fascinating insights from this article we found. Called The Secret Art of Making Her Think (laughs) About You Constantly. (laughs) Okay, now before anyone starts picturing, you know, like cheesy pickup lines. Oh, yeah. Or manipulative tactics. Right. I want to assure you that's not what this is about. No, not at all. We're talking about the psychology behind genuine attraction and building those lasting connections. Yeah, it's about really like forging a bond. Exactly. A deep connection. So think of this deep dive as like, you know, peeking into the female mind, but like without all the confusing mixed signals. Right, decoding it. Exactly. You ready to decode this with me? Absolutely. Let's dive in. All right. So the article starts off by talking about something called investment. So the idea is that people value things more. When they've put effort into them. Right. Like they've contributed something to it. Yes, exactly. It's like, have you ever heard of the Ikea effect? Oh, yeah. The Ikea effect. Tell me more about that. You spend hours assembling that like wobbly bookshelf Mm -hmm. and suddenly it's like the most prized possession you have. You're so proud of that thing. Oh, you're like, I built this. I built this. Blood, sweat, and tears went into this. Exactly. So the article suggests applying this principle to relationships as well. Okay. I'm interested to see how they apply this to relationships. So instead of always planning every detail of like a date, for example, okay, try asking her like, what would you love to do this weekend? Hmm. Interesting. So you're inviting her to be an active participant. So she's invested in what you guys are going to do. Exactly. It can make her feel more invested in the outcome, in the experience. You know what? This is so true. And it goes way beyond romance too, right? Yeah. Like at work, when you feel like your input is valued in a project, you're just naturally more motivated. You're more engaged. You want to go above and beyond. Exactly. Yeah. It's like tapping into that desire we all have. To feel like we're a part of something. To feel like our contributions matter. Yeah. Okay. So the next point the article makes is a little bit counterintuitive. It talks about mystery and absence. Oh, this is where things get really interesting. Yeah, I was intrigued by this one. The article suggests that being too available can actually backfire. Really? So like always being there, always being the one to reach out, that kind of thing. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how sometimes like the less you chase something, Oh yeah. the more it seems to want to come to you? It's like that reverse psychology thing. Yeah, it's like when you're trying way too hard to get someone's attention yeah. and it just pushes them away. And then as soon as you back off. They're all over you, right? That's exactly. So is that what they mean by mystery, like holding back a little? Yeah, it's about creating a sense of intrigue, keeping her guessing a little. So not being an open book all the time. Exactly. It's like, think of it like a rare gemstone or something. Okay. Like its value is higher because there are fewer of them. Right. Because it's rare. And the same principle can apply to your time and your attention. So not playing hard to get necessarily, yeah, but more like creating a healthy space. Yeah, giving her some room to breathe. To miss you, maybe. Exactly. Give her space to miss you, and then she'll probably appreciate the time you do spend together even more. Hmm. I could see that. So it's not about playing games. Like, it's not manipulative. No, not at all. It's about respecting your own time. And allowing for a bit of anticipation to build. Anticipation. I like that. Yeah. So, like, absence makes the heart grow fonder. That's the idea. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, it can apply to all sorts of relationships, not just romantic ones. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sometimes a little space can be good. Absolutely. It allows for reflection, maybe a little longing. And it gives the other person a chance to reach out, too. Exactly. So you're not always the one initiating contact. It creates a more balanced dynamic. I like that. Yeah, exactly. So both people feel free to, like... Pursue their own interests. And then you come back together and you appreciate each other even more. Right. Exactly. Okay. Let's move on to the next point. The article then emphasizes the importance of emotional depth over superficiality. Yes. This is a big one. What does that mean exactly? So it's about showing genuine interest in her world, her thoughts, her feelings. So not just surface level stuff. Right. It's about going beyond like, you know, the typical how was your day text and really trying to understand her as an individual. So more like, hey, remember that presentation you were nervous about? Exactly. How did it go? How did that go? Yeah. And those small details, they can show that you're truly paying attention. They can go a long way. And it can really 
really makes someone feel seen and understood, which can create a really powerful connection. Because everyone wants to feel understood, right? Excellent. It's like, when was the last time someone really listened to you, remembered something you said, and followed up on it? Right, it makes you feel valued. To feel seen. Yeah, and it's those little moments of genuine connection. That can make all the difference. That build a strong foundation for any relationship. All right, moving on. The article dives into surprises and freshness, keeping things exciting. I like that. Yeah, so this is all about breaking out of that routine, doing things that are unexpected. Okay, so like spicing things up, a little spontaneity. Exactly, injecting some spontaneity into the relationship. Uh-huh, because let's be honest, routine can get pretty boring. It can, yeah, it can get stale. So what are some examples of surprises? It doesn't have to be like a grand gesture. Okay. Oh, it could okay. be like a handwritten note. Uh, or her favorite snack, or even just a text message saying, thinking of you. Those small things can really make someone's day, you know? They really can, and they show that you're paying attention to the things that matter to her. And that you're willing to put in the extra effort. Right, and they become even more meaningful when they're personalized. Like when you really know what she likes, what she's into. Exactly. It shows you're attuned to her individual needs and preferences. So it's not just a generic, hey thinking of you. Right. It's something specific to her. Okay. So we've talked about investment, mystery, emotional depth, surprises. This is great stuff. It is. And the article goes on to emphasize showing genuine interest in her world, which we kind of touched on earlier. Right. Like really wanting to know about her passions, her goals, her challenges. Exactly. Be a supportive partner, someone she can confide in. Someone to celebrate her wins with. Exactly. And this applies to any relationship, really. Oh, absolutely. Friends, family, romantic partners. When you show genuine interest in someone's life, it builds a deeper connection. It really does. It shows you care. It shows you value them as an individual. Right. You're not just trying to get something from them. You're genuinely interested in who they are and what they're about. Okay, but here's where the article gets interesting again. It says, while it's important to show interest in her world, it's equally important to embrace your own passions too. Oh, this is huge. Like, don't lose yourself in the process of trying to make her think about you. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to become completely absorbed by the other person. Right. Maintaining your own sense of individuality, that's key. It's crucial for a healthy relationship. Because ultimately... Confidence is attractive, right? It is. And that confidence comes from pursuing your own goals, having your own life outside of the relationship. Exactly. It goes back to that idea of scarcity and value. Oh, right. Like the gemstone thing. Exactly. When you're passionate and independent, it makes you more intriguing. You're not a boring, predictable person. Great. You have your own things going on. So it's not like she's your whole world. You have your own world, too. Exactly. Wow. We've covered a lot of ground already, and it's only part one. I know this article is packed with insights. It is. So what else does this secret art have in store for us? Well, next it dives into the power of thoughtful gestures, which kind of goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about. All right, I'm all ears. So again, it's not about these grand over the top displays. Okay, good. I was getting worried it was going to be like buy her a yacht or something. No, nothing like that. Okay, good. It's the small things that can make a big impact. Like what? Like... Remember her favorite coffee order? Uh-huh. Send a good luck text before a big presentation. Thoughtful. I like it. Yeah, these are small gestures, but they speak volumes about how much you care. They show you're paying attention to the little things. Exactly, and those little acts of thoughtfulness can really stick with someone. Yeah, they make you feel appreciated. It shows you're not just thinking about yourself, you're thinking about her. You're going the extra mile. Exactly. About going beyond the surface level. And demonstrating that you're paying attention to the details that matter to her. Okay, I'm liking this secret art more and more. Yeah, it's all about being thoughtful and genuine. So we've got investment, mystery, emotional depth, surprises, showing interest in her world, embracing your own passions, and thoughtful gestures. It's a lot to take in. It is, but it's all making sense so far. It is. It's all interconnected. So what's next? Well, the article then shifts gears to focus on communication. Okay. Specifically, texting. Oh, texting. This should be good. It suggests that instead of those mundane, how is your day, 
texts. Yeah, those can get old. They can. What should we be doing instead? Try sparking her curiosity. Ooh, that's interesting. Like, how? The article gives some fun examples, like, guess what I saw today that reminded me of you. Okay, that's good. It makes her want to know more. Or, you won't believe what just happened. Ooh, fliffhanger. Right. These kinds of messages create a sense of anticipation. And it makes her look forward to hearing from you. Exactly. It's about injecting some playfulness and personality into your communication. So you're not just another boring texter. You're someone who brings a spark of excitement to her day. Someone she enjoys interacting with. You're standing out from the crowd of mundane messages. All right, I like that. It's about being memorable. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here, from encouraging investment to the power of thoughtful gestures and intriguing communication. We have, and I think we're starting to see a pattern emerging here. What do you mean? Well, it seems like these aren't just tricks or tactics to get someone to like you. Hmm, I see what you're saying. They're actually about building a genuine connection based on respect, understanding, and shared experiences. You're right, it's not about manipulating anyone. It's about being authentic and fostering a deeper, more meaningful bond. Which is ultimately what we all want, right? Absolutely. A real connection. That's what it's all about. I think our listeners are really going to appreciate that. So what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, there's a lot more to unpack in this article. So stay tuned for part two of our deep dive into the secret art. It's getting good. Can't wait to see what else they have to say. I know it's fascinating stuff. All right, listeners, be sure to join us for part two, where we'll delve even deeper into the psychology of attraction and connection. We'll be right back after the break. You know, it's funny. When we first decided to do a deep dive on relationship advice, I was a little skeptical. Yeah, I get that. I thought it might be too surface level, you know, too focused on tricks rather than like a genuine connection. Why? Like those cheesy pickup artist tactics. Exactly. But this article is really challenging my assumptions. I think a lot of people have that initial reaction. Well. We're conditioned to think of relationship advice as like a series of manipulative tactics. Right. But it's not about that at all. No, not at all. What we're really talking about here is understanding the underlying psychology. The psychology of attraction. Yes. And using that knowledge to build healthier, more fulfilling relationships. Exactly. It's like you said earlier. It's about understanding the female mind. Right. Not trying to, like, trick it. Not trying to manipulate it. Right. So just to recap, we've talked about encouraging investment, the power of mystery and absence, the importance of emotional depth, Uh keeping things fresh with surprises, showing genuine interest in her world, and embracing your own passions. It's a lot to take in. It is. It really is. But what's so fascinating is how all these seemingly like disparate concepts, they all tie back to the same core principles. Like what? Like respect, understanding, and a genuine desire to connect on a deeper level. You're right. It's not about playing games. No. It's not about pretending to be someone you're not. It's about being your best self. And creating an environment where both individuals feel seen valued and respected exactly and one of the key takeaways here is that this isn't about some magic formula right like to instantly make someone fall head over heels for you no magic spell no okay it's about cultivating a dynamic Uh that's built on mutual respect shared interests and a healthy balance of independence and togetherness that makes sense it's like a recipe for a healthy relationship it is it's about the ingredients you put in so being present being thoughtful and being genuinely interested in the other person. Those are key ingredients. It's about creating those moments of connection that make a relationship special. And this goes for any relationship, really. Oh, absolutely. Romantic relationships, friendships, even professional connections. It's about human connection. Now, one point I wanted to revisit is this idea of mystery and absence, because I think it's often misunderstood. Yeah, it can be a bit tricky. So just to clarify, It's not about playing hard to get. No, not at all. Or intentionally withholding affection. It's about having a life outside of the relationship. Okay, so like having your own hobbies, your own friends. Exactly, pursuing your own passions. Right. Giving each other space to breathe. And to grow as individuals. Right, because ultimately a relationship is made up of two whole individuals. Not two halves trying to become a whole. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. And when both individuals are thriving, pursuing their own interests, It brings a renewed sense of energy and excitement to the relationship. You're not relying on each other for all your happiness. Right. It prevents you from becoming overly dependent on the other person. You have your own things going on. Exactly. Think about it. Haven't you ever been more drawn to someone who had their own passions? Oh, absolutely. Someone who has 
a busy, fulfilling life. Yeah, it adds an element of intrigue. It makes them seem more desirable. Exactly. They're not just sitting around waiting for you to call. Right, and it goes back to that scarcity principle. Oh yeah, the gemstone thing. Exactly. When you're not constantly available, your presence becomes more valuable. So she appreciates the time you do spend together even more. That's the idea. Okay, I'm getting this. And while you're out there pursuing your own passions, you know, giving her space to miss you, uh -huh. don't forget to also cultivate that emotional depth we were talking about earlier. Right, showing her you're paying attention. Exactly, remember those little details? Like her favorite coffee order. Yes, exactly, or sending that good luck text before a big presentation. Asking her how that work project is going. Right, those small gestures can go a long way. They really can. They show that you care. And that you're invested in her well-being. It's about going beyond the surface level. And demonstrating that you're paying attention to the things that matter to her. Right, because it's those small gestures. A little thing. That often speak louder than grand pronouncements of love or affection. They show you're not just thinking about yourself. You're thinking about her. You're putting in the effort. And you're attuned to her needs and preferences. Right. So it doesn't have to be some elaborate, expensive gift. No, not at all. It's the thoughtfulness behind it. It could be as simple as bringing her favorite snack. Or sending a funny meme that you know will make her laugh. Exactly. It's about injecting a bit of personality and playfulness into the relationship. Reminding her why she enjoys spending time with you. Now, one thing I want to emphasize is that all of this advice... Uh -huh. It's meant to be empowering, not prescriptive. Okay, what do you mean by that? It's not about turning yourself into someone you're not right. or following a rigid set of rules. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Exactly. It's about understanding the principles of attraction and connection. The underlying psychology. Right, and then adapting them to your own unique personality. And relationship style. Because at the end of the day, authenticity is key. You got to be yourself. Trying to force yourself into a mold that doesn't feel genuine. That's just going to backfire. It will. So yeah. it's about finding that sweet yeah. spot. Okay. Between being your authentic self and putting in the effort to create a fulfilling and dynamic relationship. So let's say our listener is taking all of this advice to heart. Okay. He's encouraging investment, giving her space, showing emotional depth, keeping things fresh embracing his own passions, and being thoughtful. He's doing all the right things. But how does he know if it's actually working? That's a great question, and the answer is... There's no one-size-fits-all measure of success. Okay, that makes sense. Every relationship is different. Different dynamics. And what works for one couple might not work for another. So it's not about checking off a list of boxes Yo. and expecting her to suddenly be obsessed with you. Right. It's about creating a positive and fulfilling dynamic okay. where both individuals feel happy, respected and appreciated. So it's about how you both feel. Exactly. And ultimately, the best measure of success is how you both feel in the relationship. So it's not about external validation. No, it's about internal satisfaction. You're both happy and fulfilled. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So pay attention to the subtle cues. Like what? Like how she responds to your efforts, mm -hmm. the level of connection you feel. Those are good indicators. And it's important to remember that relationships are a two-way street. Right. It's not all about you. It's not just about what you're doing. It's also about how she's reciprocating. So you're both putting in the effort. Exactly. It's about creating a dynamic of mutual effort and appreciation. Mutual respect. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on briefly yeah. is the idea of communication because it's such a crucial element of any relationship. It really is. Communication is key. We talked earlier about spicing up your text messages yeah. by sparking her curiosity. Right, like those cliffhangers. But it's also important to have those deeper, more meaningful conversations as well. Like really talking about your feelings. Exactly. Sharing your thoughts, your dreams, your fears. Being vulnerable. Allowing yourselves to be truly seen by each other. And those conversations can be tough sometimes. They can be. They can be more nerve-wracking than sending a playful text message. For sure. But they're essential. They are. For building intimacy and trust. So how do you suggest navigating those deeper conversations? Well, first and foremost, create a safe space. A judgment-free zone. Exactly. Let her know that you're there to listen. Not to judge. Yeah. Not to offer unsolicited advice. Just to listen. And be an active listener. Okay, how do you do that? Really pay attention to what she's saying. Okay. Both verbally and non-verbally. So like body language. Yes, yeah, clarifying questions. To make sure you understand. Validate her feelings. Let her know you hear her. Show empathy. Put yourself in her shoes. And remember, communication isn't just about talking. It's also about listening. 
Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is simply be present. And offer a listening ear. Exactly. Okay, I like that. Now, one thing the article mentions briefly that I wanted to elaborate on okay. is this idea of embracing your own passions. Oh, right. We talked about that earlier. It's so crucial for maintaining a healthy sense of self within a relationship. Because when you're passionate about something, it makes you more interesting. More engaging. More attractive. Exactly. And it prevents you from becoming overly dependent on the other person for your happiness. You have your own sources of fulfillment. Think about it. Haven't you ever been more drawn to someone who had their own passions? Yes, someone who's living a full, a busy, fulfilling life. It's attractive. It adds an element of intrigue. It makes you want to be a part of their world. Exactly. And when you have your own passions and interests, it brings a renewed sense of energy and excitement to the relationship. You have more to talk about, more to share. More to experience together. You're constantly evolving and growing as individuals. Which keeps the relationship fresh and dynamic. It's not stagnant. Now, one thing I want to touch on is the idea of thoughtful gestures. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. It's so easy to get caught up in the grand gestures. Right, the big flashy thing. And overlook the power of the small thing. The little things that mean a lot. Exactly. It could be as simple as remembering her favorite candy bar. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Bringing it home for her. Or offering to make dinner when she's had a long day. It's about those small acts of kindness and consideration. That show you're paying attention. And that you care. And they can really have a big impact. They care. On how she perceives you and the relationship. They show that you're not just thinking about yourself. That you're genuinely attuned to her needs and preferences. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of different aspects of building a strong and lasting connection. We have. We've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about investment mystery, emotional depth, surprises, communication, embracing your own passions, and thoughtful gestures. Is there anything else we need to cover? Well, the article does revisit one point towards the end. Okay. That I think is worth emphasizing. All right. What is it? And that's the idea of letting her miss you. Oh, yes. The power of absence. We talked about this earlier. We did, but it's so important. It's worth revisiting. It is. And again, it's not about playing games. Right. Or intentionally withholding affection. It's about giving her space. Respecting her space. Allowing her to pursue her own interests. And giving her time to reflect on her feelings. Because sometimes a little distance. And make the heart grow fonder. It's so true. It allows for reflection, a bit of longing. And it gives her a chance to miss you. And to appreciate the time you do spend together even more. Exactly. And it also creates a more balanced dynamic. Right. Where you both feel free to pursue your own interests. And then come back together with renewed appreciation for each other. So it's not about being constantly attached at the hip. No. It's about creating that healthy balance. Between togetherness and individuality. Which is essential for a healthy relationship. Exactly. And when you create that balance, it allows for a more fulfilling and sustainable relationship in the long run. So to sum it all up, we've covered encouraging investment the power of mystery and absence, the importance of emotional depth, keeping things fresh with surprises, showing genuine interest in her world, embracing your own passions, thoughtful gestures, communication, and letting her miss you. It's a lot, but it all comes back to those core principles. Respect, understanding, and a genuine desire to connect. It's not about manipulation. It's about authenticity. Being the best version of yourself. Within the context of a relationship. And I think that's a key takeaway for our listener. This isn't about some magic formula to trick someone into liking you. Right. No magic spells here. It's about creating a dynamic that's built on mutual respect, genuine interest, and a healthy balance of independence and togetherness. I think our listeners are really going to appreciate this deep dive. I hope so. It's been a fascinating conversation. Wow. After this deep dive, I'm... Uh... I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about like the whole relationship advice landscape. Yeah, me too. You know, it's not about playing games or like manipulating anyone. It's about it's about understanding that psychology of connection. Right. And applying those insights in like a genuine yeah, way. Yeah, it's not about being fake. Exactly. It's about being real and authentic. Being your best self. Yeah. And you know what really struck me about this article mm. was um, it wasn't just like the big concepts. Okay. But the way it ended with like this simple, actionable challenge. Oh, yeah. I love that part. It really brings everything down to earth. It does. It makes it real. So for our listeners out there, here's the question posed by the article. Okay. What's one small, thoughtful gesture you could do today to show someone you care? I love that question. It's so good. And it doesn't specify 
who that someone is. Right. It could be anyone. It could be a romantic partner, a friend, a family member. A coworker. Even a stranger. Exactly. And it's a reminder that these principles of connection... They apply to all kinds of relationships. It's not just about romantic love. No, it's about human connection. It's about strengthening those bonds in like all areas of our lives. Yeah, it's about being a good human. Being a good human. I like that. And what I find so fascinating about that question... Yeah. ...is that it encourages action. Okay. It's not just about understanding these concepts intellectually. It's about putting them into practice. It's about taking what we've learned and actually doing something with it. Exactly. It's like we've spent this whole deep dive exploring the map of relationships. Mm -hmm. And now the article is giving us a compass and saying, okay, now go explore. I love that analogy. That's so good. <laughs> so get out there and explore those connections. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to throw that question back to our listeners. Okay. What's that one small thoughtful gesture? You're inspired to do today. It doesn't have to be grand or expensive. It's the thought that counts. Maybe you'll send a heartfelt text to a friend you haven't talked to in a while. Oh, that's a good one. Or offer a genuine compliment to a coworker who's been working hard. Or maybe you'll surprise your partner with their favorite takeout. After a long day. Or simply give someone a genuine hug and tell them you appreciate them. Yeah, it's the little things. The possibilities are endless. And the beauty of it is, those small gestures, they can create a ripple effect. Spreading kindness and connection. Far beyond that initial act. So we encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences with us. What resonated with you from this deep dive? What are your own insights into building strong and lasting connections? And if this episode sparked any questions or relationship dilemmas you'd like us to explore in a future deep dive? We'd love to hear them. Because after all, the best deep dives are the ones we take together. That's so true. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of relationships. It's been a pleasure. Until next time. Keep those connections strong, those minds engaged, and those hearts open. We'll see you next time.